Okay, so according to flat earthers, during the March or the September equinox, if you stand at 45 degrees north latitude, which is just short of 5,000 kilometers from the equator, the sun will be at an elevation of 45 degrees at 180 degrees due south. If you stand at 45 degrees south latitude, which is also just short of 5,000 kilometers south of the equator, the sun will be at 45 degrees elevation at zero degrees due north. When you create the triangles for this, it results in what has become the theory that the sun is 5,000 kilometers high above the surface of the earth. Sounds logical, right? And to be honest, almost every flat earth claim depends on this being fact. I kind of thought that all flat earthers hated triangles anyway. So how could something this clear be wrong? Well, it's simple. This occurrence happens only for a few minutes of the measured day. So claiming it as conclusive evidence is being completely ignorant of the rest of the day. It also means that it's not only a partial, but it's a completely worthless claim. First of all, the equator is a coordinate line dividing hemispheres, which is the reason why it's there. It has no purpose on any flat map used by flat earthers. None. Second, the 45 degree observation locations are based on a spherical coordinate system, not a flat coordinate system. Third of all, if this angular elevation is correct, then those at 45 degrees south could see Polaris just by the angle that you're looking. And lastly, this formula absolutely does not work with the sunrise and sunset on the same day. Let me show you why. I'm going to work out this claim using two locations on the Earth, which you can look up also yourself. At 45 degrees south latitude, Queenstown, New Zealand. At 45 degrees north latitude is Turin, Italy. Now I went through and got the hourly azimuth and elevation of the sun for both locations on the 22nd of September, 2016. The time is spaced in one hour increments, as close as I could get it using timeanddate.com, with the center time being the zenith. And in my demonstration, I will put a marker at each one of those times. Now, the reason why the zenith in Turin is not the same time as the zenith in Queenstown has to do with the time zone that they're in and where they are located within that time zone. Time zones are not geographical constants with relation to the sun. Time zones are decided by the countries where the time zone resides. Now, let's just pretend, as most flat earthers do, that the two locations are on the same longitude, meaning that one is directly north or south of the other. Now what we're going to do on this is very simple. Each one of those hour increments before and after the zenith time, I will be pointing a line per the angle of elevation and azimuth as stated on timedate.com. Now what you're going to notice here is that these lines intersect. Each one of them does. They intersect at the exact same elevation, however at different locations. But you'll see something that happens here. The track of the sun does not follow the equator. Rather, the sun follows a completely parallel line to the two locations. And it speed up given the amount of distance between markers. And then once you reach sunrise or sunset, not only would the marker be off the map, they don't intersect at all on the flat map. This is why the triangulation of the sun at the equator from 45 north and 45 south does not conclude the elevation of the sun. Because if it concluded the elevation of the sun above the equator on this day, then these angles would intersect at points directly above the equator at least halfway around the Earth. That's not the case. So ultimately, sorry for the spoiler, but any and all tracking of the sun will not work on a flat map. Ever. It doesn't matter if you use a Mercator map. It doesn't matter if you use the AE map. It doesn't matter if you use the stupid cylindrical projection that Globusters is using now with three poles. It doesn't matter. It doesn't work. Period. Earth's a globe. Y'all have a nice day.